My name is Phyllis Bradley. I'm here today in Livingston at the St. Barnabas Medical Center. I'm at the surgical center to receive new implants. I had breast cancer a year ago, double mastectomy, implants, and I have a story that you will love to hear. Hello everyone, I am your host Rayshonda Tate and welcome to another episode of I Ain't That Chick. I have another fantastic guest with me and her physician. Please tell everyone who you are, what your name is, and where we are today. My name is Phyllis Bradley. We are in Livingston at the St. Barnabas Surgical Center. I am here because a year ago I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I had the double mastectomy with uh, the reconstruction implants at that time. Year later, when I got to the next phase, which is a nipple reconstruction, a few weeks after that, I had a massive infection, which caused the removal of one implant. And so today, I'm here to get that implant, and um, actually both are being replaced because found out there was a problem with the textured ones because my doctor here, Dr. Redstone, stays up on it like that, <laughs> and called me to let me know last week before the surgery that instead of just the one, the issue with the textured one and that we would replace both and I would have peace of mind. Awesome. Do you see how excited she is? Now, doctor, <laughs> first of all, thank you so much for allowing me to come in. I so appreciate it. Please tell me, like, what is your part in the surgery today? What is it that you do? All right. So I'm Jeremiah Redstone, Dr. Redstone. I'm a plastic and reconstructive surgeon, and the majority of my practice is breast reconstruction. And I love it. I love dealing with super positive women like Phyllis. Okay. They're able to get through this and beat it and come through stronger and looking great on the other end. Um, I do the rebuilding. Uh, it's a whole team that helps take care of women with breast cancer. And that is from the primary care doctors that do the screening every year and help women get their mammogram every year. And when they find something, they refer them on to the breast surgeon. The breast surgeon does the removal of the cancer. And then I'm lucky enough to have the very positive part of this experience where I rebuild women and get them looking great and whole again. And so that's really where I end up in this whole strategy. Okay, so you kind of restore restoration and you bring the hope and the positivity back. I do. Sense. It's really, it's wonderful to be able to help women get through cancer, but only get through it and look really nice at the end and feel like they have a whole body again. Okay. Have you ever found a situation where you were not able to reconstruct someone's breast? It does happen. It's very rare. But we're talking about breast searing. Almost everybody loves breasts, mm -hmm. but I never want to risk someone's life to reconstruct a breast. So if someone is very frail and in poor health, it's not worth putting them through a big reconstruction. At that point, we don't do it. Okay. But it's very, very rare. Most healthy women, it's a wonderful option to do reconstruction. Okay. Now you mentioned before the different stages of cancer, like stage one or stage two. You said that it's almost 98% preventable if you catch it early on. No, I didn't say preventable, okay. but you, there's, a, there's about a 98% cure rate for okay. stage 1 breast cancer and lower. And that's phenomenal. That means almost yes. the, the majority of women I take care of have breast cancer, they beat it, and they live their whole full life. It does not affect their life except when they're beating and fighting. Okay. But most of these women are so strong they get through it really well. So it's amazing that it's that curable now, that 98% of women that have stage 1 can be cured. Uh, but that also lets us know how important um, screening is yeah. so that we catch it early and we get it while it's completely curable. Um, and so there's nothing as important right now for women to start mammograms at the appropriate time and to do them yearly. And what is, when is the appropriate time? Like what age? There's a little bit of controversy in the medical area of when to start between different um, societies that recommend when to start it. But most of the breast surgeons that I work with recommend starting at age 40 or mm -hmm. 10 years younger than any first degree relative female in your family had breast cancer. So if there's a family history of it, you may have to start it younger than other people. If there's not a family history, 40 is a very good number. 40 is a great number. Now we often don't focus on men. Do, do men have breast cancer? They do, and it can be serious, but it is a very rare problem. Okay. Rare. So it, although, you know, if, like women, if men ever feel a bump or something growing or something that doesn't feel like it is painful in the breast, they should absolutely have it checked, but it is exceedingly rare. Okay. 
Now, what about the women that, you know, they, we do the breast exams at home, but they're afraid to go in and, and maybe get checked and get tested? What would you say to them? So that goes back to our discussion about screening, right? If we find it early, not only can we get rid of it and get it cured and have it not shorten your life, you know, the full wonderful life, but often you see a plastic surgeon as part of that experience and you can end up looking wonderful. Uh, I have a few women that end up looking even better after reconstructive surgery than before. I'm not promising that right, anything right, and it's not a right. reason to go do it, mm -hmm. but it shouldn't scare you away. We can get you done with this whole thing, beat the cancer with your strengths, and then my job is to get you looking good. And I think we get that you know, almost all the time, almost which is amazing. Now what about for the women that come in and maybe they want to go a little larger than you would suggest? How do you work out that situation? Um, I want to rebuild women in the look and the whole package that they want. It's not my desire, it doesn't matter what size I happen to prefer. That being said, the only thing that really limits size and reconstruction is your body. Um, for some women, there's just not enough tissue and skin to reasonably make a very large breast. But overall, there's a large range, and almost all women can choose the size they want and we can do it, okay. which is great. Awesome. Two more questions. How does a woman prepare if, uh, for breast reconstruction surgery, and what is the, the recovery process like? So preparing, nothing beats being healthy at baseline. Right. That was a lot of protein, you know, and okay. afterwards making sure I took certain medications, like even zinc, to help oh, okay. rebuild. So exercise, having a healthy heart and healthy lungs beforehand is probably the it's best thing you can do. Okay. So having a baseline healthy heart and healthy lungs really helps us get through surgery quickly and healthy and recover faster. So speaking of recovery, how long does it take? It's very variable. Um, some women uh, it depends on the type of reconstruction we do. Mm -hmm. There are different types, one where it's implant only, one where there's no implant and we use the belly to become the breast, oh, okay. one where we use muscles from the back to come to the front to help do the reconstruction. So there's a whole range and they vary in invasiveness and how long the surgery takes and how long recovery is. But as a general rule, recovery is from the first surgery is usually two to four weeks um, and you can feel pretty sore afterwards, mm -hmm. but usually one week, two weeks out, you're feeling very much like yourself again, and your strength comes back over that first month. Wow, so now interesting, you just said you can actually take the belly skin, so you don't have to do an implant all the time. You can, can you take the skin and actually fill up the breast and, and make a breast? Absolutely, and that's oh. the surgery that I do probably most of in really? my reconstructions. You have to have the right body shape, right. Um, and but if you do have some belly, and you have good anatomy and everything lines up rightly, we can do a procedure on the belly that is very much like a tummy tuck. Not exactly, but very close. And that same skin and fat we would take off in a tummy tuck and just get rid of, we save when we have it become the breasts. And we, cook, we hook up little blood vessels there that help the blood flow in and out of that tissue so it stays alive forever. Well, now how, is, how important is it to have a great connection with your doctor? Oh, it's very important. Um, communication is key because I can tell you by example when I was in the hospital uh, when I had the infection mm -hmm. last month there was a woman that came in the next day she came in the day I was leaving and I could hear the conversation and I could tell that somehow there had been a miss between her doctor and what she mm -hmm. thought was going to happen because it sounded like she thought she was going to wake up like I did from the initial surgery cancer gone new breasts and instead you know she woke up just with the mastectomy and you know and I could hear the doctor and I could hear them explaining about communication or what they did or didn't understand but you know that that can be devastating I would have to agree with you completely and I I just know based on the conversations we had the pictures the Q&A how did they miss that I don't know so I do see patients that have been treated by other doctors that are sometimes not completely happy and I would see the number one problem is exactly what you said the doctor didn't do anything wrong. They're there to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. The patient's a good patient. There's no okay. problem with the, the people. Right. The problem is the communication. Right. That somehow the patient wasn't explained fully or didn't remember fully. I don't know. I don't want to blame right. on either right. one. Exactly. It could be either one's exactly. fault there. But there wasn't good enough communication that they knew exactly what they were going right. to get, what the really good options were to get the results you want, and what the setbacks can be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have to do, perform a lot of corrective surgery? 
I do, uh, but and so do most plastic surgeons. We're the surgeons that fix other surgical problems. Okay. So. Now let me ask you, when you're out and about and then not necessarily working, do you see women and say, okay, if I could just tweak this, if I could tweak that, do you do that? <laughs> I don't sit there and do that. Uh, you know, I don't think it's a healthy game to play, so okay. I don't do that. Okay. I really keep it professional at work and, and I, I love the differences in people. So to try to make everybody one you know, standard is not, I don't not think that that's how life's supposed to be. Okay. Mm -hmm. My final question, since we're a show about self-empowerment, what would you say to women that maybe are struggling with their breasts after having cancer and they're not, they don't particularly like their look, they don't feel beautiful, they don't feel feminine. And a lot of women even, um, it's called going flat. What mm -hmm. would you say to women to just empower them, to, you know, to feel better about themselves? I'd say um, there's a lot of variability in breast reconstruction. If you find someone that does a lot of it and really cares about the details, you can get a really good result. And by that I mean feel whole, look whole. Are you going to look perfect and is symmetry going to perfect and there be no scars? No. But we can get you really good and feeling like a healthy woman. And so I, I'd say if you're not happy with your reconstruction, find someone that can help you do a touch up and get it looking better. And the wonderful thing about that is thanks to the Women's Health Care Rights Act, Anything we do for asymmetry mm -hmm. or problems related to breast cancer has to be covered by insurance for the rest of your life. So it's, if it's not perfect, find someone that wants to make it better and work together to get it that way. With Phil's today, we are doing a reconstruction on one side where she does not have a reconstruction right now because of an infection problem, and we are doing a touch-up on the other side. Okay. Um, the process today is going to involve reshaping the breast and placing smooth round implants. So this is a smooth round implant. It's probably the most common implant used in the U.S. and overall extremely safe. There were implant scares in the 1980s and they were suspected to cause some autoimmune disease and maybe rheumatoid arthritis and they were taken off the market and studied for more than 20 years and proven that none of those things were caused by those implants. So they were reintroduced to the market and they're fantastic for women needing reconstruction, they are one of the options we have to get you whole again. Um, and that's what we are going to be placing today. Okay. Um, they, like any other mechanical device, can have a problem with the shell or something over time and may need to be replaced every 10 years or so. Uh, but if they don't have any problem, you don't have to have them replaced. So smooth ones are great. And what is that filled with, the smooth one? It is filled with a silicone gel which is safe for the body. Even if it leaks, it does not make you sick. Um, and the nice thing is the new implants are a gel, not an oil. So if we cut this in half, you and I could sit here all day and stare at it, it would go nowhere. It's kind of like cutting a gummy bear in half. So when it's inside you, even if the shell does get a little leak, it doesn't leak anywhere. It sits right there. Now it may cause a shape change that we don't like, and you should definitely have it replaced if there's a leak. Okay. But it's not like the old implants where it was an oil, and it was technically very hard to clean that up. Okay. This is pretty straightforward to clean up. You open the old incision, take this out, take the gel out, and put a new one in. Okay. Not a lot to go through. I don't want women to have to go through it, but not a lot compared to the old ones, which really could cause a lot of problem cleaning things up. Got it. So that's a silicone, smooth, round implant. The other options now are a textured implant, and this is a textured implant. It's also known as a gummy bear or a 410. Um, the, and the nice thing about these is it's anatomically shaped. It's more shaped like a breast. If you look at it from the side, it has a flat side that goes against the chest wall, and then it has a, a swoop to the upper part of the breast and a nice natural curve and sweep to the bottom. So it can be a more natural look. The downside of this implant is the texture on the surface is needed to hold it in place in the body so it doesn't rotate. Because it's not round, you don't want to have an upside down breast or a sideways breast. The round ones, if they rotate, they're round. It doesn't matter if it rotates, it still looks very good. Um, there has been in the scientific studies and recently reported in uh, the media a problem with the textured implants, and that is very rarely, and the number keeps changing a little bit in the studies, but anywhere between one in a million to one in three million, even some other numbers have been reported. Uh, you can get a very rare type of lymphoma related to the texture. Okay. For that reason, I discuss it with my patients carefully, and for most women, I don't recommend it. I let them make the final choice, 
I so don't they make the choice. They make the choice. Oh, okay. But I don't recommend it. The FDA still has them on the market and thinks they're a good product, but I don't recommend it because I think it's very hard for a woman that's fighting cancer to say you, we're going to put in a reconstructive product that may have a long-term risk of cancer. We're trying to get rid of this and beat it forever. So for that reason, I have not been offering it frequently to patients. If they specifically need it or want it, we do have a full and thorough discussion about it. Okay. And texture is just for the touch, just for the feel? No, the texture is only, what that does is inside your body, your body heals onto the texture a little bit, and then it can't rotate. It okay. kind of locks it in place. Okay. The smoothness is so smooth that when your body heals in around it, you have a smooth capsule around it, and that can still rotate. Got it. It's Got only it. a stop. The reason the um, anatomic or 410 or gummies, these, these ones that are shaped like breasts, are textured, is to hold them from rotating. Got it. Okay. The feel outside to the skin when you feel them is very similar to this, and that can be related to the type of gel inside, which comes in different thicknesses, so it can feel a little bit softer, a little bit harder. But now the round ones and the anatomic ones all come with different choices for the gels inside also. Awesome, mm -hmm. and you're getting the smooth gel yes. implant. She, awesome. She, she had a textured one put in before a lot of these studies were um, talking about the risk of cancer, and since we're going back to do a touch-up today, I said, why not get rid of that risk if you'd like to, and she definitely would. So awesome. that's what we're doing. But see, that's also, to me, shows the importance of your physician and going to a physician that keeps up on the latest because you know some doctors just are content to go with what they know it's worked for years and they will probably keep putting in the textured implants whereas you know i know a lot of times when he's on vacation he's also studying at some seminar or something so thank you i know he keeps thank up you. thank you thank for caring about it so miss phyllis i am here with you today first of all thank you so much for sharing your journey with us now we're talking about cancer uh, october's breast cancer awareness month and i just want you to take us back to your journey you tell us about when you found out you had cancer and take us through the steps up until today okay well i found out i had cancer August 19th of last year okay. but it wasn't a surprise because I had been getting tested for years I had my first lump at 20 so I was 20 years in mammograms before I even got the 40. Wait a minute you found a lump at 20? I had a lump removed at 20. Okay. And then I had another small lump removed a different breast at 30 so I was always yeah, having something. Okay. Yes. Now I, I do want to stop there because that tends to be the beginning when a woman finds a lump in her breast. Did you? Did you? Did you? When you felt it, did you know it was a lump, or did you have to Not guess? at first. Okay. And so when you have kind of fatty breasts, they all feel like lumps. So you right. never know if if that's a good lump, a bad lump. It's just some fat, and then they change over the years as you get older. So to me, I never trusted my own opinion 100%, okay. you know, and that's why I always, I don't think I've ever really missed any mammograms. And then of course with that comes, you know, the occasional biopsy if they do find something. If they find something. So I had my first lump removed at 20. I had another one removed a few years later and then nothing really mm -hmm. for years. You know, the mammograms were fine. Uh, then I would say within the past 10 years, and I wonder if it's because you know, I was actually reading an article that talks about laptops, cell phones, pages, and all those different things. Do you, yeah. Now, maybe it's true. However, you figure my body was already having some issues. Okay. And I remember our 2005 job switch. Now I've got a laptop. You know, I'm working on a train, doing the like things. So the laptop is on my lap. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, women don't have pockets everywhere. So where's my pager? Clip to my bra strap. Yes. Where was my storage. cell phone? It was over here. So I'm just lining my body with all these electronic devices. And whereas for someone else, it may not have been a problem. And for me, I'm just like turning the switches on. And it was after that, it's like, let's say 2013, they found what they called calcification. It wasn't cancer, but some level of calcification that, of course, they had to go in and remove. And biopsies are no fun. You know, no. you think, you know, you, you know, people whine about the mammogram, but if you go for the mammograms, maybe you don't need anything else. Mm -hmm. You know, with the biopsy, they take you into a room, it's a nice cold metal table with one hole in it. Okay, okay. And you were, you were very adamant about getting uh, mammograms. Oh, yes. Every year. Every I, year. Once a year, twice a year? It depended. Now, for the first 35 years of uh, getting mammograms, once a year was enough for me, okay. but starting in 2014, I had to start getting them every six months. 
because it was after this point that I'd had the testing to tell me that there was a high possibility I would get breast cancer. So it was during that period that I also switched doctors okay. because they wanted to give me tamoxifen, which is, you know, what they give to women who have had breast cancer, mm -hmm. which is fine. Mm -hmm. I didn't have breast cancer, mm -hmm. but I also knew enough about medicine and my body that tamoxifen can cause blood clots. Mm -hmm. I had one when I was younger. So if I'm telling these doctors, okay, yeah, but you know, I had a blood clot, and they're telling right, me, well, take right. this anyway. Right. I feel there's a disconnect and you're not listening to me and you can't be you my doctor, doctor anymore. You need now take me up to the day where the doctor says, you know what, you have cancer. Okay. What did that feel like? Well, probably because I'm maybe a little different than most people. Because I'd had 40 years worth of mam mammograms, because I'd had biopsies and other type of, you know, tests. Well, my doctor, Dr. Kalu, down at St. Michael's. At the uh, Connie Dwyer Breast Center, which is awesome, she said to me, she's like, you know, I, you know, I want to let you know that the last test came back and, you know, we found cancer. And I just looked at her and said, I was like, well, does this mean I get rid of these and I can get some new ones finally? You are the most positive <laughs> breast implant patient. I, I, you know, I, I just could not see the downside okay. so of the, having was, new breasts okay. at 60. So you took the positive route because a lot of women is de is devastating to it you know, hear that I have cancer and you know it's it's they're sad they're upset they're angry they're right. hurt you didn't you didn't experience any of that no and it could be also because you know I had you know my testing I was going at that point every six months mm -hmm. okay. so I was mentally prepared that it could go either way you know I could mm -hmm. get cancer or not get cancer and if I get cancer what are the options okay. Now, I would say the only thing I was not aware of was all the many options for the reconstruction. Okay, all right. So now you had a double mastectomy. Yes. And, and you had to have one. Yes. You had to have, there was no saving. Well, you know, there was, you know, because my breasts were, you know, we figured we've been doing, I had surgery in 2013, okay. 2015, mm -hmm. and here we were 2016 now again. Okay, so you. So for me, the double mastectomy with the implants, it was almost like a blessing. You know, I don't have to go through these mammograms. The biopsies are painful. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, mm -hmm. you know, I was on the table, last biopsies, for like an hour and a half because two on one side, one on another. You know, you're getting needles. And you get tired. You feel that stuff later. Mm -hmm. and, and it was exhausting. Okay. You get tired yes. of that. So now today we're here and you're getting reconstructive surgery. Well, I'm getting, it, it, it is, it's not as invasive as before. This time, I'm just getting implants. Uh, Dr. Redstone mentioned several types of uh, reconstruction. Now, when he first mentioned it to me, and he said, well, you know, we can use fat. I was like, oh, life is such a fat? He said, my thighs? He said, no. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, ooh, a two-four. Uh, when they mentioned... When they mention like kind of the tummy tuck, honestly, I'm always concerned because I always think of Donda West, and I always Honey think yes. yes, and I always think of getting too much done at one time. Okay. So right. I felt like I I work with the implants. What I chose was the muscle flap. Okay, and what is that? The muscle flap is that you know because even when you get the implants, you know what the muscle flap will do is it help look give the smooth look. Okay. okay. But to do that, they take the muscle from your back. So turn, and I will let the little. camera see. So what happens is you are cut from here and from here on each side, and the muscle is actually taken and flapped around to the front to cover the implants. Really? So yes. they set the implant on top and that could The implant's really? in and there's muscle on top of the implant to protect it. Wow. And to keep it looking smooth. That, you know, like if somebody pokes you, the hole doesn't stay right. there. Right. Until right. it right. works its way back out. Any any concerns, any fears, any anything? Because you are, the, I, I love your positivity. No, I love no. your spirit. No, I, I would just say that if anyone were to choose to have the muscle implant, well, according to my primary, was a, was, in her opinion, it was the best option. And they tell you that, you know, afterwards you're not going to be able to move your arms and do certain things. Okay. And that is more than true. Okay. But I had a great sister and a great daughter who also happens to be a nurse. So I recuperated at my sister's house because with the muscle flap, 
your muscles remember where they used to be. Yeah. And it's, I learned that every muscle in your body is connected because with the muscle flap surgery, I don't regret getting it, but it's a longer recuperation, you know, to bend over and touch my toes. Yeah, you have to hurt. Yeah. Take to it. try to reach around and handle my business. Hurt. You know, and I, I had a long reach. So you can't so, do too much. You know, you can't. No, you can't. It's, it's really restrictive. I'm even trying to tear the tab off of a yogurt. You feel it. You feel you it. You feel it. And even at the healing, you know, I was at my sister's, everything was level. The most painful thing, going upstairs. Mm. Because that requires more movement and holding on. It was, you know. Okay. But I'm, I'm good now. You know, I can lift my arms. I can do everything. Mm -hmm. And pretty much get back to exercising once I get this last one. So you're you're are you cancer free? I am cancer free. I've been cancer free since the surgery. I have not required chemo, radiation or anything. My hair is fully intact, just uh prep for surgery. Now most women though will have some form of chemo or radiation. How is it that you didn't have to have it? Because I was up on my mammograms when the doctor said show again. up, show up. And one thing I will say Ooh, about say that again, show up. Show up. One thing yeah. I can say about the Connie Dwyer breast center that was different from anywhere else, mm -hmm. they would make the appointment and send me a letter. They did not wait, like say if I left here today and I was leaving Connie Dwyer, by next Friday, I would have a letter in the mail that says, okay, your That's next awesome. appointment is scheduled for, you know, uh, December, whatever. Okay. Get, I want you to get back to show up because there are going to be women out there watching. And some women just feel like, oh, it's not important, you know, for me to get a uh, mammogram. Or some women are just scared of, of finding out that there may be something wrong. What would you well, say to them? Look at this way. The way I look at it, there are only four basic responses that you can get when you go to the doctor, when you get the results of that mammogram. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that depends on how often you get your mammogram. The doctor can come back and say, Oh, we caught that in time. We're going to be able to do the reconstruction right. and you won't need chemo or this, this, and that. Or it's going to be, wow, we just caught this in time. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're going to be able to do the construction, but you know, you're going to have to have maybe chemo follow up. Okay. Then there's the next one where it's a little bit more aggressive because you've waited too long. You've waited skipped long. two years of mammograms. So now we can cure you, but you're going to have to have some chemo, which is going to cause hair loss. You're going to have to have radiation, which mm -hmm. makes your bones brittle mm -hmm. and affects the skin and may affect your ability to get an implant because now the skin and everything is healing. And then there's your last response, which is, I wish you got here sooner. We'll do what we can. Ladies we'll don't make you wait. comfortable. Ladies, don't wait for that. Don't wait for And that. what I have found out recently, you know, it's not women who don't have health care. It's not so-called underprivileged or uneducated women who don't get mammograms. I had a fire inspector come to my house because see now that I've been through this I ask every woman who looks like she's over whatever age did you get your mammogram and I don't ask mm -hmm. just in October good I ask good. when I see you fire inspector came to my house over 40 somehow I managed to always bring up my story she, oh she skipped one now you figure you're a fire inspector city of East Orange educated you got benefits what's your excuse when I was in the hospital after in August, after getting, you know, the minor infection that caused the implant to be removed, which turned out to be a blessing, though. There are nurses that are coming into the room, nursing assistants, and we're talking, and I'm asking, and they're like, oh, you know, I didn't get mine yet. Ooh, it hurts. You know, my debt. Ladies. Look, I'd rather take those, well, it's more like 15 minutes of pain and just be able to go home free and clear or to know what I need to do to keep living. Or, you know, skip a couple of years and you can be that one that didn't make it. Yeah. You know, everybody knows that happened. one friend. Yeah. You don't want to be the one. Yeah. One last question. Mm -hmm. Implants, your girls, what size are you getting? What are you getting? And what are you well, most excited about? Well, I was um, a 38 triple D before. Well, actually, well, no, I take that back. See, that's the problem. Well. You know, sometimes your original ones don't always match up. See, I was like a triple D on one side, but just two on the other. So then, you know, you're trying to stuff the extra under the armpit it on one side. Right? You know, the bra strap is loose on the little side and bigger, you know. Um, I, one, I enjoy the symmetry. Mm -hmm. I enjoy knowing that I can never have another mammogram. I mean, I, I can't get any more mammograms because you can't do that with implants. So for 40 years worth of implants to all of a sudden go away, 
Okay. That's a big deal to me. That's awesome. And I, I think a lot of it also has to do with, you know, your relationships at home, who you're involved with. Support. You know, your family support. Support is very important. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a mate, you know, definitely bring them in early. I would say make sure they're fully aware of what's going on, what to mm -hmm. expect, what your body's going to look like. Because after the initial surgery, you know, you're not walking around like they show I'm botched with some beautiful new boobs. Yeah. The first part is just, you've got implants. Mm -hmm. You've got smooth implants. You look like a doll, baby. Mm -hmm. In my case, um, because they take every bit of thing, you are only left with the skin. That's mm -hmm. how they make sure there's no cancer. I had an issue with the skin healing over the implant. Okay. So that took a couple extra months for me. But everybody's different. I mean, that's just a matter of cream daily, which makes the skin heal, promotes the healing, the blood and everything. That was that was my biggest deal. Okay. So yeah. you're ready. You're excited. Yes. You're in, you yes. Guys. I've um, already got my new nipples months ago. I'm, you know, I'm gonna be fulled out. And the last part, which will be at a later date, is the tattooing. Okay. Because you know, you, tattoo all that. you know, and like I said, bring your mate in early. Yeah. You know, I was fortunate Support is important. Support to have is important. someone supportive who Loves looked you at, it. who loved me through it and did not look at the scars as a bad thing, but looked at the scars as, wow, well, you know, those scars mean you're living. Right. You know, right. those scars are keeping you alive. You know, I have to say, this, <laughs> she ain't that chick, y'all. She didn't just lay down and give up and let cancer beat her, but she yeah. was very proactive in getting mammograms. And so I, I stress the importance, go get your mammogram. Yes. You may think it hurts, but cancer hurts more. Yes, go does. get checked, go get checked. I ain't that chick. We're about self-empowerment, right. self-awareness, and self-respect. Empower another woman, encourage them. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being so positive. Thank you for sharing your message. Mm -hmm. Thank you for I share this. Yes. With everybody I see, so I do not mind sharing this on camera because mm -hmm. it's just that important that I'm amazed at how many women skip the mammogram mm -hmm. like, um, no. Well, you no. are saving lives today, so thank I you. I hope so. Y'all, we have to let her go because she has to go and get all, you oh, know. Oh, yeah. I'm going upstairs. She's yes. going up. We're going to send We're her We're going to get my Nicki Minaj back on. Oh. Yay, Nicki. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say goodbye to, goodbye, you guys. Bye. Want to find out more about I Ain't That Chick? Visit our website at www.iainthatchick.com.